Shalom, welcome to Tax Big Torah. I am Heath Hayes, and this is a just a small video on the Feast of Trumpets, okay? Um, you may have heard to it referred to as Rosh Hashanah or Rosh Hashanah. Um, it is uh, essentially uh, it takes place on the first day of the seventh month per scripture. Um, I know that we are in September and per the Gregorian calendar that is the ninth month of the year. Um, yeah, the Gregorian and uh, you know the biblical calendars, they do not match, they don't line up. Uh, so there is some stuff there. Um, we will be celebrating uh, Feast of Trumpets on Monday. Um, so that's, we're pretty excited about that, you know, because we're coming into the fall, the season of fall feasts. And yeah, uh, so it is a Sabbath. It is what scripture calls a holy convocation um, where a group of basically your tribe, your people, uh, your like-minded brothers will get together. Um, it is a memorial of blowing trumpets, and it does uh, include Aaronic priesthood uh, offerings, uh, offerings of which we cannot do because the context of these offerings are within the context of the role of the Aaronic priesthood, right? So there's that. So where we see uh, Feast of Trumpets in Scripture, um, a really good reading is going to be Leviticus chapter 23, and that's going to give you a full rundown of all of the... Uh, it's going to give you a really good rundown of all of the Moedim. And uh, where we see that here, I'm sorry, here we go. All right. So where we see that here in scripture is, uh, Leviticus chapter 23, uh, verses 23 to, through uh, 25. And it says, Yahweh spoke to Moses saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall have a Sabbath rest, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. And you shall do no customary work on it, and you shall offer an offering made by fire to Yahweh your Elohim. Okay? So, with that said, it's about as basic as it gets. Uh, it's on the first day of the seventh month. It is a Sabbath, so you treat it as such. Um, it is an appointed time, and a big point of uh, of Feast of Trumpets is to blow your trumpets. Um, it is a time of joy. Uh, we see in the book of Numbers, uh, Numbers chapter 29, verses 1 through 6, it says, uh, And in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no customary work, for you it is a day of of blowing the trumpets. You shall offer a burnt offering as a sweet aroma to Yahweh. Uh, one young bull, one ram, seven lambs in their first year without blemish. Their grain offering shall be fine flour mixed with oil, three tenths of an ephah for the bull, two tenths for the ram, and one tenth for each of the seven lambs. Also one kid of the goats as a sin offering to make atonement for you. Besides the burnt offering with its grain offering for the new moon, 
the regular burnt offering with its grain offering and their drink offerings according to their ordinance as a sweet Roma, an offering made by fire to Yahweh your Elohim. Okay, so that's basically uh, the context for which we're looking at with uh, Feast of Trumpets. There are stories um, that take place around the time of the Feast of Trumpets. Uh, one notable story is uh, uh, Nehemiah in chapter 8. Uh, that actually takes place uh, or in and around uh, the contextual timeline of, uh, or rather it was around the time of uh, Feast of Trumpets, because it literally says on the first day of the seventh month. Um, and then we also have a, you know, kind of a witness, if you will. A lot of people believe that this will witness to the trumpets or the Feast of Trumpets as a whole because of uh, the coming of our Messiah. In uh, Matthew chapter 24, in verse 30, it says, uh, let's see. So, and this is New King James Version. Uh, you can read it in the scripture. It's going to kind of read the same way. Uh, but uh, in, let's see, verse 29, Matthew chapter 24, verse 29, it says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, and the stars will fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. The sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heaven to the other. Okay, so that is believed to be a, a witness uh, to the idea. And when you fast forward down to uh, verse uh, 36, chapter 36, basically 36 to, to 44, and I'll just start reading in uh, chap uh, verse 34. Again, still in Matthew 24, it says, Surely I say to you, this generation by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. And the context there with this generation is uh, really referring to uh, the context being that generation that is alive at the end of the age when Yeshua does this. When they see all these things, that generation will not pass away before it's completed. Okay. And then it says in verse 36, But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. And then it continues on, you know, talking about Noah and the flood. Two men will be in the field, one will be left, one will be taken. Um... And watch, therefore, if you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But know this, verse 43, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also be ready, for the son of Adam is coming at an hour you do not expect. Okay, so... That is an interesting thing right there, just an interesting concept. Yeshua will be returning at an hour we do not expect. And then we see, what is this here? Uh, in these notes, we also have 
uh, afterward, let's see, Matthew chapter 25. Um, and I'll not read all of it because it's it's quite long. But uh, I recommend you do some looking into it because there is some contextual stuff in here that is pretty, pretty important. Uh, essentially dealing with the wise virgins. Uh, the, the essential, what is it? The wise and foolish virgins, you know, those who had oil in their lamp versus those who did not. And in verse 12 of chapter 25, Matthew 25, 12, he says, he answered to us and said, As surely I say to you, I do not know you. Well, uh, him within this context, he's actually speaking to the virgins who did not have oil. They had no idea when he was coming. And the idea that is being perpetuated here is kind of like a Hebrew wedding. Uh, whenever a man and a woman in the Hebraic culture of those days, they would become betrothed to one another. That man, he would go off and prepare a place for his bride in his father's house. And only the father would tell the son, okay, that's good. You may go retrieve your bride, right? So we don't know when this is going to happen. We don't know when Yeshua is going to come and retrieve his bride. Only the Father knows. So, so like uh, Yeshua said in Matthew 24, uh, 36, But of that day and hour no man knows, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. So he's truly, our Messiah is adhering to every letter of the word. Like he's keeping the Torah. He's keeping it. Um, let's see. And then we also have a uh, a witness to Yeshua. He's his coming. Um, it says that he'll come. He'll it'll be like you know when he comes, we, he will be seen coming in the clouds of uh, of heaven with great power and glory. And in Acts chapter one, verse nine, it says, "Now when he spoke these things." While they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And verse 10, While they looked steadfastly toward heaven, he, sent, he went up, and behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing into, up into heaven? This same Yeshua, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come, will so come in like this, in like manner. So he'll come in the same manner as you saw him go into heaven. The same way he ascended is the same way he's going to descend. <clears throat> so there's that witness there. And then uh, we also have 1 Corinthians Uh, 15, 51 and 52 says, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised, will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Okay, so it's another perpetuation of the idea of the trumpet. Well, when is that changing taking place? When does Second Thessalonians say uh, the dead will rise first, right? The dead will be raised incorruptible. Well, they will be raised first, but when? At the last trumpet. Uh, so, interesting. Um, super interesting, actually. For if we believe that Yeshua died, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 again, um, even so y'all will bring 
with him those who who sleep in Yeshua. Okay, so those who have died, they are asleep. Uh, some people, some folks are like, well, that means uh, soul sleep. Their souls are asleep while they're waiting. I am, from a scriptural standpoint, more aligning to that school of thought that when a person dies, they don't go to heaven. Um, I just don't see support in scripture for that. Um, but I'll not push it on you. Don't try to backlash on me because it's not a conversation that's even worth being had. Um, but with all of that said, we do have scriptures on that. That the dead in Christ, or those who were dead, uh, in the last trumpet, when it sounds, those dead who were in Yeshua will rise first. Okay. For Yah himself will descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of Yah. So again, we see that there. And then, then when we are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet uh, Yeshua in the air. And thus, we shall always be with Yeshua, our Messiah, and with Elohim. So that's basically that. Um, there is a lot more context uh, as you dive into the book of Revelation um, to kind of unlock those scriptures of First Thessalonians chapter 4 uh, that normally gets pretty twisted up by the Christian church as a whole uh, with uh, theological, uh, eschatological rapture theory. Um, so there is that, but beyond all of that, uh, that is pretty much a, this synopsis for, uh, Feast of Trumpets. It is very much so looking forward to the time that our Messiah is returning to the earth. And of course I, I showed you the, uh, the witnesses within scripture about, uh, our Messiah returning uh, with the sound of a great trumpet and then the dead rising upon the last trumpet. Um, again, timing there is going to differ depending on where you fall in your school of thought within the context of prophecy in the book of Revelation. Uh, but at the end of the day, keep and obey the commands, man. And part of the commands is the Moedim. And the Moedim uh, Feast of Trumpets is the first of the fall feasts, the first of the Moedim in the fall. So up next we'll have uh, Atonement. So stick around for that. Uh, be on the lookout for it. And thank you for staying along. I know it's dark. Um, we're coming into Shabbat right now. Monday is uh, Feast of Trumpets. So, bless you guys. <laughs> and my truck said it's shalom time, so bless you. <laughs>